collars, small disc-shaped marine animals in the phylum with sea stars, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins more closely resembles the urchins as they are in the same class. Though lacking five arms like a starfish, sand dollars do exhibit five-fold radial symmetry characteristic of the phylum. The familiar exoskeleton of a dead sand dollar called a test composed of calcium carbonate plates that one finds washed up on a beach is white, but a live sand dollar has a very different appearance. The outer shell is covered by skin and also by many short spines and tiny muscular projections called tube feet. These give the live sand dollar a velvety appearance. Typically, mature sand dollars are about 3 to 5 inches in diameter and 3 eighths of an inch thick. These sea creatures are found close to shore in a low intertidal zone that is usually covered with water except at very low tides to as deep as 30 feet. Depending upon the species, they can be a variety of colors, yellow, orange, blue, greens, and even black, but Dendraster eccentricus, the species we have in the Salish Sea, and found from Alaska to Baja California, is dark purple. The many species of these animals have a variety of common names around the world, including sea cookie or snapper biscuit in New Zealand and pansy shell in South Africa. I'll call them sand dollars. The eccentric in the name Dendraster eccentricus refers to being off-center. See that the flower-shaped pattern is not dead center? It's a fitting name as it has also evolved some eccentric behaviors unique amongst sand dollars. I'll get back to this later. The sand dollars' bodies have two distinct sides, but both are covered with tiny appendages. On the bottom side is the mouth, anus, food grooves, and holes for the tube feet arranged in five rows radiating outwards from the mouth. All other species of sand dollars except for the Pacific sand dollar make their living as deposit feeders lying flat in the sand mouth side down using tube feet and mucus filled channels to deliver detritus to their oral cavity. Though the Pacific sand dollar can feed in this way too, the evolved off-center body plan takes advantage of a completely different feeding strategy as well, suspension feeding, netting the passing phytoplankton. Positioned in the sand with one edge buried, they expose the feeding surface to the water currents. The anus will also be exposed when the sand dollar is embedded at an angle into the sand. Yes, everybody poops. Here is a sand dollar eliminating waste. Adults living in fast moving water currents grow heavier skeletons. Young sand dollars swallow heavy particles of sand, storing them in a special structure located at the lower edge of their bodies to help them remain embedded upright. At maturity, they lose these weight belts. Food particles such as phytoplankton and organic matter are caught by sticky mucus on the tube feet and passed along special food grooves to the mouth. Any particles caught on the top side are moved over the edge of the test onto the oral surface to the mouth. It may be hard to believe, but this flat, round-shaped creature actively moves around. In sheltered bay areas with little water movement, sand dollars move about frequently. With moderate water flow, they are often stationary in an inclined position, whereas in wave-exposed outer coast areas, adults are usually buried beneath the sand. At low tides, when the beds are exposed, they may be seen slowly moving across the wet sand surface, leaving a track behind. A sand dollar at Foul Weather Bluff in Hansville, Washington made this track, ending up buried beneath the sand. Therefore, the type of food and method of collection changes depending upon whether they are suspension feeding while positioned upright, or whether they are creeping about the ocean floor, mouth side down, stumbling upon an amphipod, or completely buried under the sand where they may find only detritus to eat. 
The tube feet along the five radial areas on the undersurface of the animal are primarily used for locomotion and feeding. Burial to a depth of four inches takes about 15 minutes for an adult and five minutes for a juvenile. Riding itself may require two hours or longer. They also have small hairs called cilia which help sweep up small bits of food while the tiny tube feet collect larger food pieces. If you see a tiny teepee shaped cone of spines bunched up on a sand dollar's body, you've found a captive amphipod or crab larva being held for transport to the mouth. Sand dollar's mouth has a jaw with five teeth like sections called Aristotle's lantern, used to grind up tiny plants and animals. They feed on the larva of crustaceans, zooplankton, algae, and detritus. Sometimes a sand dollar chews its food for 15 minutes before swallowing, and it can take two days for the food to digest. If you break open a dead sand dollar's test and you find hard, loose white pieces, you have found the teeth of the sand dollar. On the top, or arboral side, in the center of the five-petal flower-like structure is the madreporite a perforated plate-like structure that forms the intake for the water vascular system. Radiating outward are the five petals, which are actually pores for the double rows of tube feet, which are used for respiration, not locomotion. These specialized tube feet perform gas exchange similar to gills, where oxygen from the water passes through the thin skin of the animal's feet and into the body. Also on top are the genital pores, from which the eggs and sperm are released. From about May 1st through July, female sand dollars let their eggs out into the water where they lay or float until the male comes along and fertilizes them. Eggs are pale orange and are covered by a thick jelly coat which keeps the adults from eating the eggs. Within two to four days, four armed pluteus larvae develop and become part of the floating menu of zooplankton, and yes, adults do eat the larva. Sand dollars go through metamorphosis with several larval stages before developing skeletons and settling on the ocean floor. In addition to sexual reproduction, the sand dollar larvae clone themselves, especially when food is plentiful or temperature conditions are optimal. Cloning also occurs when they detect predators, thus doubling their numbers while effectively halving their size. Tiny larval sand dollars are pelagic, traveling many miles as they are swept along by ocean currents away from the parent group. The developed larvae will receive a chemical cue from adults to settle down into a bed of sand dollars and begin to undergo complete metamorphosis to their adult sand dollar form, joining the established colony. Sand dollars are usually crowded together over an area. As many as 625 sand dollars can live in one square yard. This is probably helpful for successful reproduction, but also the flow of water is deflected over and around them and into their mouths. They have relatively few predators, although some crabs, sea stars, snails, skates, octopi, seagulls, and fish do prey on sand dollars. The calcareous test is the main deterrent to other potential predators, but when threatened by pink sea stars, for example, sand dollars may run away, burying themselves under the sand as quickly as possible. Large storms or unusual exposure in high temperatures 
can cause mass mortality, but old age is thought to be the main cause of death. Like with trees, scientists can age a sand dollar by counting the growth rings on the plates of the exoskeleton. Sand dollars usually live 6 to 10 years, but they can live up to 13. Sand dollars buried at low tide are highly susceptible to being crushed by careless or unknowing beach walkers. A few decades ago, Crescent Beach in British Columbia was famous for its dense sand dollar beds, but now only a few individuals exist. Decreasing populations can be traced to a variety of human causes such as habitat destruction, including bottom trawling damage, pollution to near shore tidal zones, increased predator populations, and lack of beach stewardship. Sand dollars are beautiful, and while perfect for crafting, please keep only what you need as the breakdown of their shells is part of the natural cycle. Of course, only take tests from dead sand dollars on a beach where you have permission to collect, and please try to be sensitive to the live ones beneath your feet. I hope you feel richer with all of this new knowledge about this incredible creature, the sand dollar. Thank you.